Folks, good evening to you all. Welcome to the roast of Ellen Green. My name's Arthur Malik. It's a pleasure to be here on this most suspicious occasion. On behalf of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, I'll extend to all of you greetings and hallucinations. Some background information about me. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce through two organizations. One is the Hava Torah Synagogue in, in Stoughton, which is also Ellen's synagogue, and also through the Lloyd Animal Medical Center in Stoughton, the, uh, the animal hospital here in Stoughton. Let me first introduce our guest of honor, Ellen Green. In, uh, importantly tonight, we have official timekeepers whose job it is to keep the roasters to five minutes. And I'm going to introduce the timekeepers. Sharon and Steve, would you just uh, identify yourselves? We also want to thank some of our, some of our donors of the desserts. Cheetos Cakes, Stop and Shop, Orange Leaf, the ATC Bingo Crew, and Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, for those of you who aren't members of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, you and I might have a lot more in common than you think because I've got a feeling that by this time tomorrow, I won't be a member either. <laughs> now the real heyday of the roast was the 1970s. Uh, at that time you could turn on the TV and watch the Dean Martin roasts or you could watch the uh, Friars roasts. Those were the, the, the roasts that, uh, that, that I think of when I think of a roast. The roasts today have sort of lost their edge a bit, but nonetheless, they're still a lot of fun and they're still very popular vehicles as fundraisers uh, everywhere. Everyone loves a roast, uh, except usually one person. <laughs> now, uh, some of the roasters have asked me over the past few weeks, what are the, uh, what are the guidelines for tonight? What are the rules? And it's very simple. There are none. I told them all to let their conscience be their guide. And uh, with the group of pathetic degenerates on this dais, I think that was a mistake. But what a night this is going to be. Paying homage to Ellen Green, a woman who is liked and respected by everyone who's never met her. A woman who brings joy and happiness whenever she goes. <laughs> Ellen Green never forgets a friend, but then again, she's only got one. <laughs> Zero if Barry doesn't count. <laughs> now, when the chamber first asked me to participate several months ago, I initially declined. And a few days later, I happened to bump into Barry Green, Ellen's husband, and I told him. And he asked me, why didn't I want to do it? I said, well, you know, being a roast, I just don't feel comfortable insulting Ellen. He said, well, you should hear what she says about you. Now, Ellen is one of the most well-loved congregants at our synagogue. It's hard to find anybody that doesn't like Ellen. Hard, but not impossible. <laughs> now, you know, we've got congregants who are going to find something or someone to complain about no matter what. I was sitting in the chapel one day, and from the row behind me, I heard one congregant muttering terrible things about Ellen, that she's difficult to get along with, she's lazy, uh, <laughs> They, they, it's even the inference, she wasn't very bright. I mean, terrible things. Now, I'm not the confrontational type, but I decided I was going to give this congregant a piece of my mind, a congregant who obviously couldn't know Ellen very well. So I turned around, and uh, it was Barry. <laughs> now, Ellen, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, but uh, a number of your fellow board members on the board of directors here at the Chamber of Commerce have it in for you. They, uh, they really don't like you very much. Uh, but don't you worry, I, I have your back, I have you covered. At uh, one of the last board of directors meetings, a couple of board members came up to me and said, boy, that Ellen Green, what she said tonight was the stupidest thing she's ever said. But I stuck up for you. I said it wasn't. <laughs> now, over the past couple of weeks, uh, several individuals have come up to me and they've asked me, do I think a roast is really such a good idea? I mean, after all, aren't you afraid some people's feelings might get hurt? And I admit that was a concern, uh, but to that concern, I say the following. So what? <laughs> Our first roaster tonight 
is Ed Sharkansky. Now, Ed is an attorney, but most people find him likable. <laughs> Ed also is the town moderator for the town of Easton. Now, it is an honor and privilege to have Mr. Sharkansky with us tonight. Uh, in fact, he's told me so himself. Ed Sharkansky, who once said, there is absolutely no place for nepotism in the town of Easton unless it's to help a family member. <laughs> now, uh, Ed's, Ed's field is actually criminal law. And as such, you know, he deals with, uh, well, some, some unsavory types. Every day, he deals with killers, drug addicts, uh, embezzlers, thieves. Truly the, uh, the dregs of society. And I think that's probably why he had no qualms when the old colony Y asked him to work alongside Ellen Green. Ed Sharkansky. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Malik. You really killed it. I don't know if you guys, some people mistook me for someone who works here because about six people just asked me to turn the heat up. It was so cold in here. I think I saw about 20 people put their coats on. But anyway, this is about Ellen. Just a quick warm up. You know, Ellen is a self proclaimed klutz. Everybody knows she can't really walk straight. I once walked in her office, she was tangled up in a cordless phone. <laughs> Not bad, right? Good warm up. So in preparation for this event, there are some people here, I used some moles, I did some research to get to know the real Ellen. And what I always knew was that Ellen was an outstanding executive director. She was smart and creative and compassionate leader. Warming up here. You look nervous. With a work ethic that is second to none. In fact, some may say that her only fault is that she cares too much about her work and that she works too much. But that would be a lie because my research reveals that Ellen can be more accurately described as a hyper-competitive control freak who's obsessed with numbers and struggles for the right words. <laughs> Not bad, right? This is what I've learned, really, in the last 48 hours. This is why we love her. So Ellen's competitive nature... Be, I, I love that I get to go first, because they're going to be bummed, ready? I get to talk about Tupperware. Just took all your jokes. So in another life, Ellen was like a top Tupperware saleswoman. And that's where her hyper-competitive nature comes from. In fact, she knows everything there is to know about Tupperware. Watch, watch. Ellen, what do sharks and Tupperware have in common? <laughs> they both like a good seal. <laughs> you think it's easy to find a Tupperware joke? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm making a living. Anyway, uh, Ellen will not be bested by anyone or anything. I'm told that when Words with Friends was out, she would find, if you had it, she would stalk you and she would crush you into submission if you were a Words with Friend player. Professionally, I'm told she competes by numbers. She's constantly looking at the computer, I'm told, at work. Membership units, budget numbers, numbers all the time. I'm told that her staff prohibits her from using the word numbers at staff meetings because she's so obsessed. But don't worry, she does talk at meetings sometimes. So as opposed to a staff meeting, we have board meetings and it's a board of volunteers and you know, we're supposed to really run that meeting. Ellen really is supposed to report to us. She's supposed to be quiet and just sit and listen and maybe get some ideas, but she, it was clear she wasn't very good at that. I think it was Joyce who taught her for your first board meeting, again, they're volunteers. You want to help them volunteer, but at the end it was clear that I was just voluntold what to do. But I heard her sitting next to me saying to herself, as she usually does, Shut up, Ellen. You're doing it again. Shut up, Ellen. So that's not the only advice that Joyce had given to Ellen when they transitioned power recently. Uh, when Joyce, on Joyce's last day, she said to Ellen, I've left three numbered envelopes in the desk drawer. Open one if you encounter a crisis you can't solve. Three months go down the road, and there's major drama at the Y. Everything goes wrong, the usual stuff, and Ellen feels very threatened by it. She remembers the parting words of Joyce, and she opens the first envelope. The message reads, blame your predecessor. <laughs> so she does, and she gets off the hook. And about three months after that, the Y is experiencing a dip in membership. There's major programming problems. Ellen quickly opens the second envelope, and it reads, reorganize. She does, and the Y quickly responds. Three months later, at the next crisis, she opens the third envelope, and the message reads, 
prepare three envelopes. <laughs> you laugh, but the truth is, Ellen almost didn't even get the job at the Y. She didn't know it was a Y. The first time Ellen drove by the sign that said YMCA, she looked at Barry and she said, oh, they spelled Macy's wrong. <laughs> Good stuff, right? But thank goodness she, she did get the job because she really is like a wonder woman at the Y all the time, right? Wonder woman, she wonders where her keys are. She wonders where the staff is. She wonders where the money's going, always wondering. So we've talked about her hyper-competitive, control freakish obsession with numbers. Let me tell you about her problem with words. I'm told that she was once inter interviewing, these stories come to me. She was once inter interviewing a candidate for what, what was a, an entry-level job, but apparently she asked him why he wanted a batter, bar, bottom of the barrel position. True story? Yes. <laughs> Despite this problem with words, she's very social. She likes to talk to the members at the club. In fact, um, we had a conversation recently. Dr. Malik, myself, and Ellen were talking about the um, pros and cons of having a wife versus a mistress. So. Of course, me being the lawyer, I said, well, a mistress is great because if things break down with your wife and there's a divorce and you have all these legal problems, who wants that? And Dr. Malik said, no, he's a doctor. He said, no, you want to have the wife because that's stability, lowers your stress, healthy, long life. That's Dr. Malik. And Ellen, the busy exec, says, no, you want both. Because when your mistress thinks you're with your wife and your wife thinks you're with your mistress, you can be in the office getting some work done. <laughs> One minute, perfect. In a moment, or at the end of the night, Ellen's gonna, she's gonna wanna get up here and she's gonna say a few words, but I'm gonna tell you after me, there'll be nothing left to listen to. I'm gonna tell you what she's going to say. You can all go home. Because she's gonna stand up and she's gonna say to you, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is, we have enough money to finish the building over at the Stoughton Y. The bad news is, it's still out there in your pockets. That's all I have. It's great to play the Sons of Italy Hall. Move it to That's fun. Wow. Oh. Our next roaster is Mark Lepo. Now, Mark, uh, hold on, Mark. I'm not ready. I've got a few insults. Mark's a longtime member of the Chamber of Commerce. He's sat on the board of directors for many years. He's also a fellow congregant of Alan and mine at the synagogue. Uh, Mark's been my friend for many years, and I attribute that to several factors, uh, mostly bad luck. But Mark's a loyal friend. He's dependable, reliable. I can always count on him. He's always there every time he needs me. But honestly, though, I will tell you that uh, I would consider myself very fortunate if one day I had just three friends like Mark Lippo. I'd be very fortunate, because right now I've got about 10. <laughs> but I do want to point out that every resident in the town of Stoughton owes a debt of gratitude to Mark Lippo. Mark did something recently that improved the property values for every resident in the town of Stoughton. He moved to the town of Plymouth. <laughs> Mark Lippo. Good evening, everybody. Here we go, here we go. So, Dr. Malik, um, I want you to feel right at home tonight, so I brought you some dog treats. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. You're right at home, you're right at home. Um, so my name is Mark Lepo. I lived in this town for 30 years. I raised a family here. Um, I've been a member of the Stoughton Chamber. You name it, I've done it, as far as that goes. But enough about me. I know, I've known Ellen for probably over 25 years. And um, in the early years, my son Jason was in a carpool with her family. Ellen used their seatbelts to put over their mouths <laughs> while she sings. Jason, to this day, still wears the seatbelts over his mouth. <laughs> Anyways, a couple of uh, little jokes about Ellen at work, as far as that goes. Ellen, as you well know, is the director of the YMCA in Stoughton. Ellen has important decisions at work. She weighs out the options with, and goes with a Diet Coke. 
<laughs> One day, Ellen tried playing hooky at work by placing a beanbag chair behind her desk with a dress on it. <laughs> Who would have known? Ellen heard there was a spinathon going on. She twirled in her chair and said, Wee! <laughs> Ellen was given a yarmulke one day at Temple. To my surprise, no one said anything when she mistook it for a piece of deli meat. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ellen tried wearing yellow to work one day. I don't know why, but everybody was yelling, taxi! <laughs> Let's see, we got a little few more here. <laughs> one day, Ellen wanted a family portrait. The Green family all looks the same. An artist one day was asked to paint a family portrait. He came back with six McDoubles, threw it against the wall, and said, I'm done. <laughs> Ellen was at the gym one day. That's it for one day. <laughs> so, so now I have uh, the, my Ellen's top 10 list. Did you ever, number 10, did you ever wonder what life would be like if you had enough oxygen at birth? <laughs> Number nine, you should have been born in the dark ages. You look terrible in the light. Whoa. <laughs> Number eight, you used to be arrogant and obnoxious. Now you're just the opposite. You are obnoxious and arrogant. <laughs> Number seven, <laughs> you, are really, you are really pretty as a picture. You know I like to hang you. <laughs> N number six, a sharp tongue does not mean you have a keen mind. Number five, you have a nasty speech impediment, your foot. <laughs> number four, I like your approach, now let's see your departure. <laughs> number three, I thought I wanted a career, it turns out I just needed the money. <laughs> number two, chaos, panic, and disorder, my work is done here. Number one, I can't talk to you right now. Tell me where you'll be in 10 years. I'll make sure I'm not there. <laughs> so at this point, um, Chris has, um, I was privileged to, to find out what her staff music meetings are all about. And this is her theme song when she runs her staff meetings. <laughs> So this is uh, always uh, one of the, Ellen's first piece on her agenda. Just because I give you advice doesn't mean I know more than you. It just means read this out loud. This is cat. This is cat. This is how cat. This is to cat. This is to keep cat. This is a cat. This is an idiot cat. This is a busy cat. This is for cat. This is 40 cat. This is seconds cat. Now go back and read the third word from each line from the start. This is how to keep an idiot busy for 40 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, in closing. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. I know you like to be in charge. <laughs> Ellen, thank you for your devotion to the community. You're an inspiration to all. Your hard work always pays off. It has been a pleasure to call Ellen a dear friend. We all meet people in our travels. I have been blessed to know Ellen and her family over the years. Watch your children grow up, a privilege to drink with Barry, Diet Coke, and have countless hours discussing strategy at the Stoughton YMCA. Wishing you much success for you and the family. God bless you. Thank you, Mara. Our next roaster is Sam Lampert. Now, Sam is by far the youngest member of the dais. Wait a minute. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. She's actually close friends with uh, Ellen's children. Uh, they grew up together, and she considers Ellen her second mom. Uh, now, recently, Sam got engaged, and the first thing she did was she called Barry and Ellen to give them the good news. And uh, Barry uh, gave her now, the, the benefit of his years of wisdom and experience, he offered some very sage advice. He said, the choosing of one spouse is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Because from, one, from that one decision, 
it will come 90% of your future happiness or 99% of your future misery. <laughs> now, although Ellen and Sam are not contemporaries, they do have something in common. It turns out that Sam graduated from Bryant University in Rhode Island, and Ellen was once thrown out of a bar in Providence. <laughs> Sam Lambert. <laughs> Not as tall as these people. All right. All right, so I'm going to be straight with you right off the bat. Like, none about Ellen's ex-boyfriends were with her. I was skeptical about coming up here tonight, so let's just practice a little bit before we get going. Here's how it's going to go. Joke? Good. Good. No, it's good. Just like that. That's perfect. All right, nice and awkward. Here we go. I was hoping at least Ellen would be drinking. Hopefully throughout the night someone will buy her a drink. She won't remember any of this. It'll be a little bit better. <laughs> we'll see. But it's nice that all of Ellen's friends could come out tonight. Helps that we all came in the same car, so that was good. <laughs> Can obviously tell by the fact they had to get a 26-year-old to roast her. <laughs> yeah, but they did a, a real nice setup here. I think this is probably the most Jews that have ever been in the Portuguese club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I recognized some people, but I think all the Jews just look alike, so it was hard to tell. It was hard to tell. Maybe you guys were wondering why no one fed us dinner tonight. I know I was wondering that when it started at 7. I think it's because the host knew that Ellen was allergic to everything, and no one was really up to the task of serving a dinner that was gluten-free, vegan, soy-free, dairy-free, egg-free, taste-free, so they just, they just skipped it all together. So if anyone's hungry later, you can thank Ellen. Yeah. Speaking of food, if anyone's ever been to Ellen's house for dinner, they know that really she should be the roast master up here. She's made more roast than anyone I've ever met. She could probably work at Starbucks. <laughs> I know there's a lot of why people here tonight. It's the only way to get people to come in. Hopefully, I'm just hoping Ellen's a lot more aware of a boss than she was as a parent. I know we got away with a lot of stuff when we were kids. Just saying, I know, I think parents are supposed to be on like a 10 year delay, so we'll talk in a few years, we'll tell some stories then. Definitely not in front of all of these people. Again, the, this roast though must be the most time that Ellen's ever spent not playing games on her phone or talking about work. I know you must be struggling, it's gotta be hard. Sometimes when I go over her house, I have to FaceTime her just to get her to look up and look at me. It's hard, it's hard. Yeah. Actually, I once thought about adding my phone number to her phone as the why, just so I could be sure she would answer my calls when I called. Yeah, gotta have strategies. Did you guys know that Ellen's actually a really adventurous person? I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes on her one vacation of the year to, to the same place, Vermont, every year, you know, sometimes she'll go kayaking, sometimes she'll go hiking, really living on the edge, you never really know what she'll do there. Yeah. Actually, it turns out her most exciting vacation in the last 10 years was to Branson, Missouri. I swear I didn't even make that up to exaggerate my point. That's literally the place that they chose to go on a family vacation. Like, when I was writing this, I was like, where's a more boring place I could, like, say to exaggerate my point? And I couldn't think of anywhere more boring than Branson, Missouri. Yeah, that's true. But really, Ellen, I just want to thank you for inviting me and making me be a part of this. And, um, you know, always being there for me. I really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to many more years making fun of each other. <laughs> to Ellen. You don't have to hold up the signs. I'm good. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sam. Jeez. You know, uh, looking at this audience, this is a veritable who's who of South Shore society. And a uh, number of distinguished individuals here. I thought I'd recognize some of them tonight. Terry Schneider is here, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Stand up, Terry. Stand up. Just wave your hand. Be recognized. There you go. Now, Terry, Terry grew up in New York, went through the New York City public school system at a time when that school system was, was not quite up to par. And on top of that, he was not the most stellar of students. One day, Terry tried to impress a girl in class and passed her a note. It said, he has ESP, ESP. He was trying to spell pot. <laughs> Actually, truth be told, Terry was considered quite advanced by metropolitan New York City standards. Uh, as a fifth grader, he 
Yeah, as a fifth grader. <laughs> Terry was considered quite advanced. As a fifth grader, he was swearing at a 10th grade level. <laughs> Bob O'Regan is here from the Board of Selectmen. Where are you, Bob? Raise your hand, be recognized. Where are you? No, no, no. There he is. Good to have you here, Bob. You know, Bob does a great job as a selectman. Uh, one thing about Bob O'Regan, uh, Bob is never afraid to state his position on any issue confronting the town, no matter how controversial it might be. You're going to at least know where he stands, and I respect that. At one meeting, they were discussing extending the commuter rail to Providence. Mr. O'Regan went on the record stating that transportation, transportation was one of the best ways to get from one place to another. <laughs> Alan Lader is here. Alan, raise your hand, be recognized. Alan's previous president, past president of our synagogue. Uh, Alan's line of work uh, requires he travel extensively on business. He spends three or four nights uh, a week in hotels all, all over the country. And you know, when you're living that kind of lifestyle, there are a number of temptations. But uh, Alan's always been uh, a pillar of morality. He got back to his hotel room one night only to find that there were two 21-year-old, scantily dressed girls waiting for him in his room. But no, I don't know, Alan, the uh, epitome of ethics and morality, said, listen, ladies, there's obviously been a mistake. I happen to be the president of a synagogue. It is inappropriate for you two girls to be here. One of you will have to go. <laughs> now, my mother-in-law is here, Beverly Tattlebaum. Beverly, raise your hand, be recognized. No, no, I'm not going to say anything to derogatory about my mother-in-law, I promise you that. Uh, my mother-in-law, uh, she's the most compassionate, kind, generous, thoughtful mother-in-law I've ever had. <laughs> and finally, Rabbi Jay is here. Rabbi Jay, we call him Rabbi Jay, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Hollisman. Rabbi, raise your hand, be recognized. There he is. You know, I, I was doing the math. I was doing the math. It turns out Rabbi Jay has been the rabbi at our synagogue for 20 years. I couldn't believe it. And I, I mentioned that to a few other congregants, and they couldn't believe it either. They could not believe it's been 20 years. They said, somehow, it seems much longer. <laughs> but actually, I do remember it all happening 20 years ago. I remember hearing the rumors that a decision had been made, and we found a new rabbi. So I called up the search committee and asked if it was true. They said, yes. I said, well, tell me something about this new rabbi of ours. What's he like? They said, well, he's kind of hard to describe. I said, well, what was it about him that made you choose him? They said, well, we like his wife. <laughs> Our next roaster is Stan Hurwitz. Now, Stan's a longtime friend of the Green family. I've actually known him and his wife for many, many years. Uh, Stan, actually, I'm, I'm surprised you made it here this evening. I uh, didn't realize you could still drive at night. <laughs> now. Stan and his wife, Beth, have been married for 42 years, and before tonight's festivities, I asked Beth if she remembered the very first time that she met Stan, and she did. And I said, well, do you remember the very first words that he said to you 40-some-odd years ago? And she thought for a second, and she said, you know, I think I do. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think the way it was was he took one look at me, and I believe he said, what a peach. <laughs> or was it a pear? Uh, that's terrible, Stan. Not good. It's not good. Now, I, uh, tend to, I like to talk politics with Stan, uh, and his interest in politics goes way back. As an elementary school student, he worked at the grassroots level on the campaign to re-elect President Roosevelt. Uh, not Franklin, Teddy. Stan Hurwitz. I wasn't really uh, prepared for this. <laughs> oh. This one. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Oh, wait. Props. Don't waste time. She's giving me one minute. Oh, look, I have my, well, I have this part of it. The other part's over here. Hold on. Uh, this isn't my real face. Both Ellen's husband, Barry, and his son, her son, Ben, told me they weren't happy with this whole roasting idea. 
and threatened me if things go awry. Right? Right. Yeah. Some of the other roasters threatened me not to be funnier than they were going to be, which I can't help. So uh, right after tonight's event, I'll be going into the witness protection program. And that reminds me, uh, Beth, when it's time to leave, will you go out and start the car, please? All right, I, I can do without that. I was truly moved and honored when Ellen personally asked me to be part of this roast. That feeling evaporated when I saw who the other roasters are. I'm impressed with the lineup of roasters, and I do mean lineup. Ellen, this room isn't big enough to hold all your friends, so we invited enemies. <laughs> and looking at the menagerie, the menagerie seated at the roaster's VIP table, that explains why they asked the veterinarian to be the MC. <laughs> By the way, Dr. Malik, I was going to ask you if, the, if you could identify what the uh, refreshments are made out of tonight. But I don't want to insult the people who donated the pastry. I thought there was going to be some, uh, you know, other stuff. I have a long history with Lloyd's Animal Hospital, as many of you might. Dr. Malik took care of two of our family dogs, the late Meredith, <laughs> a retired racing greyhound that was always fetching about old injuries, and the late Wrinkles, the dog from hell. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Malik, for putting them both down prematurely. And Beth says, thank you for the special choke collar you got for me to wear. <laughs> Ellen, are you paying attention? Yeah. It's past her bedtime. Before you get too swell-headed about all these people who rearranged their schedules and made enormous sacrifices to help honor you tonight, don't be so self-important. It's actually a pitiful turnout considering the 300 people were invited. <laughs> And these are the, actually the not-so-smart ones, the slower ones who couldn't think of excuses to get out of it. <laughs> you may be wondering, along with me, why I was asked to be part of this illustrious charade. Perhaps it's because she's known me an awful long time. She put the emphasis on awful. <laughs> I've known Ellen for more than 20 years. Dr. Malik, that's about three in dog years. I discovered a connection between Ellen and Dr. Malik. He delivered her kids. <laughs> At least Ellen didn't have to go to a pediatrician with them. Is this on? It's been tough digging back into Ellen's early years in her native New Bedford. In fact, I couldn't document her actual birth date because the New Bedford Courthouse burned down in 1932. <laughs> Ellen has a reputation for being ahead of her time. Did you know this? She considered a career as an air traffic controller, but the Wright brothers had just taken their first flight. I like that wave of laughter when people finally get it. Sometimes true love comes out in unusual ways. A few weeks ago, I understand you said to Barry, how can you tell me you still have two kidneys and we can't afford a vacation? <laughs> Reminiscing about their wedding, how many years ago? 31. Reminiscing about their wedding 31 years ago, I overheard Barry tell someone that, quote, anyone who says their wedding day was the best day of their life obviously never had two candy bars fall down at once from a vending machine. Barry said, time has gone really fast. The marriage has felt like 10 minutes underwater. <laughs> Barry still follows the good advice he got on his wedding day from helpful relatives. If someone steals your credit cards, it's better not to report it. The thief will definitely spend less than Ellen. <laughs> and Barry, do you know, Barry, I know Barry. Do you know what it means to come home at night to a woman who will give you a little love, a little affection, a little tenderness? It means you're in the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> Overseeing the Y has had a positive effect on Ellen. She now has the stamina to drive the Boston Marathon. <laughs> and the Stoughton Y membership has grown dramatically. Much of that is due to the roster of unique new classes 
As a sign of Ellen's creativity, here's a few of the ideas that, of classes that Ellen suggested that they didn't quite make it into the program guide. She recommended, Jeff, pay attention, these are good ideas. Synchronized nude aquazumba. Piranha fishing for toddlers. And blind rodeo chess. Ta no, wait, Ellen. You look good for your age. Barry told me you spent two hours in the beauty salon yesterday, and that was just for the estimate. <laughs> Is it true you agreed to a mud pack? I understand it looked okay for a few hours and then it fell off. The mud. Some of the staff share your keys to success and to looking so young, and that's not working too hard. But Ellen has come a long way. I want to talk time. T I want to just talk. Oh, come. By, by the way, Beth, Beth uses a kazoo, which tells me it's time too. Um, a hook. But I, I want to tell you what she learned from being a Tupperware lady. This ties in with, with, with talking about Tupperware. From the Tupperware, she learned how to keep a tight lid on things, how to be unbreakable, how to keep everything flexible, transparent, fresh, and dishwasher safe. <laughs> And I do see by, I have this written here, by the way, my ex-friend Sharon Fredkin, the timekeeper. I've only known you for 20 years. Can I have another 20 seconds? She made you do it, I know. Oof. I feel like I'm one of the candidates for president. I see by the threatening gestures that my time is almost up. I want to so all seriousness aside, I have to be a little serious, okay? Do I have time for that? Flip back to one minute. Beth, my beautiful wife of 42 years, told me that I have to say something serious, so I'll show off appropriately in the Portuguese club with a little Hebrew. And I want to show off to the good rabbi. Well, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on, by the way. I want to quote from an old Hebrew... Ble rabbi Hausman remembers me from the most hilarious eulogy I gave from my mother-in-law two years ago. Remember? It was... My mother-in-law was rolling over. Anyway... I'll close with this little Hebrew blessing. May you go ad me'ah ve'esrim. And that means may you continue until 120. Oh, that was uh, very funny stuff. And uh, give my compliments to whoever, whoever wrote it for you. Our next roaster is Joanna Rothman, and she's Ellen's sister. Now, uh, Joanna, those that know Joanna best know that uh, she firmly believes that there are precisely two occasions when it is appropriate to consume alcohol, AM and PM. <laughs> now, she's a speaker, a writer, and a consultant, and as such, she travels extensively on business, and she was lamenting to me about how much she hates to travel on business. She says, well, the only thing that makes it even remotely tolerable is if she happens to be staying in a particularly comfortable hotel. And she did say that on, on her most recent business trip, she did stay at a very comfortable hotel. She said, in fact, she said, in fact, the pillows and the towels were so big and fluffy, she had a hard time closing her suitcase. <laughs> Joanna Rothman. They're both on. on. Oh, excellent. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering, I am standing up. <laughs> um, Ellen, break out the tissues. Because I don't believe in making fun of people. I do my own thing, and I'm doing my own thing tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you three very important things about Ellen. First, Ellen has extraordinary people smarts. Now, you should know she's not shabby at all in the book smarts department. I came home from college my freshman year. I was confused about calculus. She took one look at the book her freshman year of high school, and what happened? She explained to me about differential, differential and integration equations. She explained to me. I was the one taking the class. So, but the people smarts, oh my goodness. 
Ellen Schwer showed me how smart she was with people when she was two or three and I was six or seven. That's back when you went to the, um, the pediatrician together, right? Your mom took you to the pediatrician. There was a waiting room. There were no toys. So I sat there with my book. Ellen, on the other hand, went around and met every single person there. <laughs> I know you're so surprised. She also met their parents. She found out what they had for breakfast. She came back and said, we should have this for breakfast. <laughs> All right, so I thought this was kind of astonishing. How could one person know that? Now, fast forward a couple of years, and when she was already in nursery school, and if you looked in the program, Debbie Jacobs was in nursery school and all this other stuff with Ellen. So she really did go to nursery school. Um, Ellen was supposed to get her tonsils out. So everyone was supposed to draw a picture. This is back when everybody drew a picture when it, one person was going to be out. So Ellen had to draw a picture too. And on her picture, it said, everyone will miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> And she was right, because they did. So um, now there's, there's another kind of must-do activity for children of our generation. And I am the older sister. So um, some of you, I am the Neanderthal, but you might be the paleontologist. Um, so Ellen and I took piano lessons for several years. I, I played Beethoven and Bach and Brahms. Ellen played something else. Very different. Um, can you do it? Can you unlock your phone? Oh. Somehow it went into Wi-Fi. This is, this is not my phone. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, you did. I took it. I had to take you it out. You gave me the wrong phone. No, I had to take it out of the cover so I can put, plug the... Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> right. I hate Apple products. <laughs> yeah, one of us is a control freak. Which one? <laughs> Ellen played. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, I, I need my time. I need my time. All right, so. That's enough, yeah. So, so now here's the key. Did anyone really want to hear Fur Elise? Only my mom wanted to hear Fur Elise. But did everyone want to hear King of the Road? Yes! So Ellen, Ellen showed those people smarts even back then when she was uh, figuring this out. Um, Ellen will never tell you this, but she manipulated our parents with great love, but she totally didn't. Okay, so the next thing I have to tell you is Ellen is a crier. I hope you have tissues. Oh, excellent. Okay, so when we used to watch Little House on the Prairie. And she would cry. It was, it started, <laughs> it started at 8 o'clock. By 8 5, she was crying. Um, she cried at the movies. I would go to the movies, and I would stuff my pockets full of tissues because Ellen would say, can I have a tissue, please? Okay. Um, she cries at commercials. And you know the Boss of Me commercials? I'm sure that you cry at that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Ellen cries because she has a, this huge, generous heart. And she notices her feelings and uses them to figure out where she's going. And the last thing I want to tell you is that Ellen is loyal. If you are your friend, she has your back. I'm not so sure about some of my other roasters. Um, and how many of you have, have been the recipients of Ellen's help? She takes you to doctor's appointments, oh, whether or not you really want to go. Um, <laughs> She sits with you through the happy times, the sad times. She puts a smile on, that wonderful Ellen smile, and she helps you get through your day. So I've told you three very important things about Ellen. She has terrific people smarts. I'm, I also said she manipulated our parents, which is a good thing. She's a crier and she's loyal. And this is all because Ellen has such a generous, generous heart. So you know some of her accomplishments. The two wonderful, outstanding children. My niece and nephew. I guess I should have said it the other way around, in birth order. Um, a demanding job that she excels at. And a terrific husband who supports her work and her choices. And all of you wonderful people who love her. All because of her big heart. And if she quit tomorrow, you would miss her. So, instead of roasting Ellen, 
Let's toast Ellen. Please raise your glass with me and tell and my sister and my friend, we love you. That's it. You can clap now. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Our next roasters are a married couple, David and Cecile Sinclair. They've been married for 35 years. Uh, Cecile, Cecile tells me that uh, congratulations are in order for David. David's just about to finish his first book. Uh, not, uh, not writing one, reading one. Uh, David actually performs stand-up comedy professionally. And uh, last weekend he had a gig. He entertained 200 people. The only problem is there was an audience of 800. <laughs> Several years ago, David lost his job. He, the way he tells it, his boss fired him because of illness, which is somewhat true. His boss got sick of him. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, they've been married for 35 years, and before tonight's event, Cecile was reminiscing about her and David's early dating days. It was quite interesting. For the first date, David called up Cecile, asked her to the movies, and they went. Second date, called her up, asked her to the movies, they went. Third date, exact same thing. Fourth date, fourth date, David called up Cecile, asked her to the movies, and Cecile said, you know, David, I'd like to have dinner before the movie if that's okay. And David said, no problem. I'll pick you up at nine o'clock. That'll give you plenty of time to have finished eating. <laughs> David and Cecile Sinclair. In case you can't tell, I'm standing. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Can we keep it going for our host, Arthur? Isn't he doing a great job? You know, there's a trick to public speaking that when you get up here, you picture the audience naked. As a veterinarian, he's picturing you all with pointy ears and tails. <laughs> And he'll be working his second job for anyone that's interested. He'll be selling slightly damaged animals out of the trunk of his car after the show tonight. So thank you. Thank you for that, Arthur. It's great to be here to roast Ellen tonight, isn't it, dear? Yes, where is she? She's right there. Where? Right next to you, right there. No, Ellen! That's Ellen, Ellen Green. Ellen Green? I thought we were here to roast Ellen DeGeneres. What am I going to do with all the lesbian jokes? <gasps> wait, wait, wait. I can use a couple. You're not. <laughs> Give me that. You're not doing lesbian jokes. Party pooper. <sighs> well, Ellen, what can we say about you? I am standing up, too. <laughs> well, what can we say about you, Ellen? Other than the fact that your husband's a saint. <laughs> and I know you, have a, you can be a crier and some people have been really tough on you and I know some are going to be even tougher than me so I brought you a present milk and cookies because <laughs> you know gluten free okay you got your snack here got your chair. there's a little bit of caloric in the milk though <laughs> All right. okay so as Arthur said, I've known, we've known Ellen for a really long time. There are only three people in the room that I am aware of, maybe four, that have the honor of knowing Ellen longer than I. Her dad, her sister, a mutual friend. And I met Ellen four decades ago. That means damn you're old. <laughs> um, we were really close in high school. We had best of times, and I'll never forget how Ellen signed my yearbook. I'll get you next <laughs> <laughs> That still keeps me up at night. Have you noticed I'm the one with all the clean language, okay? Um, Ellen lists in our yearbook, Ellen lists her nickname as Mouth. Now, just because we're from New Bedford, it's not what you might think. Ellen, as we all know, is not a wallflower, and you like to talk. 
She liked to talk. Believe me, she liked to talk a lot. In fact, she was voted the most likely to use all the words in the dictionary in one sentence. <laughs> um, Ellen was a member of the drama club, where she was voted queen. She still holds that title today. Drama queen. Your majesty. <laughs> and Ellen then moved on to college. Ellen is a graduate of UMass Amherst, the participation ribbon school of all the colleges. <laughs> Back in the day, she had a huge reputation at, well, I'm sorry, UMass had a huge reputation of being a party school. It didn't actually start until Ellen arrived. <laughs> I don't want to say she was a party school, but did you know that the Yiddish word for party dancing is based on Ellen? The word is actually twerking, and that's where it came twerking. from. <laughs> I'm going to hand it over now to the funny one. <laughs> it's true. How many of you know what her major was in college? Yeah, it was, it was fashion design. Ellen having a major in fashion design is like Trump having one in charm and Clinton having one in ethics. From college, Ellen put the degree to good use, though. She went into computer sales. She didn't know jack about systems, but your mouse pad always matched your screensaver. <laughs> Ellen soon realized that she was wasting her talents on computers and she saw her future in the world of finance. Then she took a job in collections. Did you know one of Ellen's first jobs was working in a collection agency? It's true. Look at that sweet, loving, adorable face. Friggin' leg breaker. <laughs> but the job did give her the training she needed for the future at the Y. Think maybe uh, you could catch up on those dues? Be a real shame if grandma's wheelchair was to roll into the pool. <laughs> After collection, she moved to the big time. You heard about it before, Tupperware. One of the largest mob syndicates in the world. <laughs> just like the Colleone family, only better looking. Of course, Tupperware is connected. How else could you buy 10 sets of products and within a week you got four bowls and 10 covers? Her street name at Tupperware was The Burper because whenever you say something she doesn't like, her response is tss, tss, tss. She does that at home so often, Barry wears goggles. It's true. <laughs> Tupperware lasted a few years after she moved her way to the top of the syndicate. Then the burper considered starting with a new racket collection, a racket that had a steady cash flow. She came home, she said, Barry, I'm taking over the Y. Barry got real excited. He thought Tupperware was expanding into sex toys. <laughs> Reliable and fresh. <laughs> Her first job at the Y was to establish positive cash flow. She began by changing the name of the Y from Young Men's Christian Association to you might consider auto pay. <laughs> Ellen coined the membership drive slogan. Let's put it this way, you'll be healthier than if you didn't join. <laughs> The why of the chamber, she's become one of those rare celebrities, so famous that she's referred to by just one name. <laughs> Told you it was gonna be bad, kid. <laughs> Ellen is very popular as the wise executive director. Her popularity is reminiscent of Oprah Winfrey, but Oprah gives out cars and gifts. Ellen's dream is to stand in front of a crowd like this and go, you get a bill, and you get a bill, and you get a bill, you all get a bill. <laughs> but Ellen's true treasure is her husband, Barry. Do you know what their hobby is? Hiking. They love to go hiking. Ellen's dream is to take her treasure hiking and bury him. <laughs> it's true. They thought it would be the perfect hobby for them, considering family and friends are constantly telling the two of them to get lost. <laughs> the local nature preserve even named a trail after him. It's called the Psychopath. <laughs> Ellen is very competitive. Did you know that? 
She's extremely competitive. I played Scrabble one time, she won and spiked the tiles like Gronkowski. <laughs> I won't play with her again though. Did you know that Scrabble tiles she has at home are made out of the bones of the people she's beaten? <laughs> There's a lot more about Ellen that I could say, but the way she is looking at me, frankly, I'm scared. <laughs> In fact, I think I just peed a little. <laughs> so let me say that on behalf of myself and my wife, knowing Ellen and Barry and their family has been a pleasure, and we're very honored to call them friends. From the heart, we love you guys. Thank you. Any <laughs> questions? Our next roaster is Susan Lyons. Now, Susan and her husband, Frank, have been married for 12 years. They are just celebrating their 12th wedding anniversary. And uh, Frank, being the, uh, the romantic, the hopeless romantic that he is, he uh, had intended on bringing home flowers tonight, but uh, things ran a bit late, and by the time he got around to it, all the cemeteries were closed. Now, uh, Susan works for the Stoughton Public School System, uh, her title is Parent Liaison at the West School and the Jones School. And what she does is she, she in this role, she helps in the education of, of our elementary school students. Uh, and earlier this evening, I was jotting down a few last minute remarks and I actually got hung up on a, on a matter of grammar, one of those who versus whom things. Couldn't figure out which was right. And I try to be grammatically correct if I can be. Well, make a long story short, just then I happened to see Susan. I said, Susan, how are you at grammar? She said, well, I would think I'm pretty good. English was my best subject. I said, well, take a look at this. And I showed her what I was writing. And I said, do you think this should be who or whom? She thought for a second and she said, I think it should be who, but I ain't positive. <laughs> Susan Lyons. So I met Ellen at the Y, and I'm not sure how long it was ago, probably between five and ten years ago, maybe longer. Um, I was very young, I know that. Um, and Ellen and I actually, um, we share a lot of traits, but one thing I've noticed about Ellen is she's a very sad person. <laughs> she cries a lot, <laughs> and I mean a lot. So. Ellen asked me, or actually maybe it was Joyce, so someone asked me to be the chair for the spinathon. So I thought, okay, I can do it, and I'm gonna have this rule that I'm gonna stick to. Never talk to Ellen. <laughs> because, as you know, she might cry. So each year, Ellen gives me these challenges, these goal amounts. And each year, I just give her a look of, I can't do that. But she says, just go ahead, do your thing. And I just follow my rule, never talk to Ellen. <laughs> I just kind of look away. So she proves me wrong every year. But let me tell you how this, this spin-a-thon thing turns out. So we go in the day before, we set it up. Ellen comes in, her eyes fill up. And I just look away, because I'm not going to talk to Ellen. So here, here. Oh, <laughs> The next morning, she comes in. Things start going on. Ellen gets on the bike, seven o'clock. She does her thing for an hour. She gets off the bike, eight o'clock, and says, I'm gonna go take a shower. And I think to myself, oh, thank God, I've got an hour. I don't have to look at Ellen. I don't have to talk to her, nothing. So she comes back after the shower, and she says, how are we doing? <laughs> well, I can't talk to her, so I just look down. I go, I don't know. So she finally, she walks around, she does her Ellen thing. She goes down the stairs, she comes up the stairs, she comes back, how are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. But I look up this time, 
because you have to look at her sometimes. And she's all teared up. The eyes are red, and she's all teared up. And I think, oh, good God. Yeah. <laughs> Here's to Ellen. So it doesn't matter. I just keep looking out of the corner of my eye, doing what I'm doing, and Ellen's doing her thing. And eventually, she comes to the point of the day, and I ask someone to go find Ellen. And she comes around the corner. And I don't want to really talk to her and tell her what's going on. And I just do this. <laughs> We're good. We're good. And Ellen, she cries. <laughs> and she cries and she cries. So I don't particularly want to be that enabler to make Ellen cry, but sometimes I feel like I am. So here are some things that Ellen would like to tell you would make her cry. Maybe they wouldn't. <laughs> so if you said to her, that mom is happy that her little boy is safe in the water because he learned how to swim this summer, she might cry. <laughs> or that dad... <laughs> That get, dad got to drop his diabetes medicine because he started a workout routine. She might cry. <laughs> or the little girl that went to camp, had a life-changing experience, made some new friends, she'll cry. <laughs> or if there's a coffee commercial on, <laughs> she might cry, right? But while she's crying, she'll smile through it all because it's actually a good thing. And Ella wouldn't be Ellen if she didn't cry. And her crying shows how much she cares about what she's doing. So Ellen wouldn't be Ellen unless she pushed people and inspired people to go beyond what they think they can do, like she does every single day. And Ellen doesn't always cry. She does stop at some point. <laughs> and when there is a need, Ellen stops crying. She does. And if you approach her and tell her that you are in contact with a family that really needs something, she moves into action. And she gets this family whatever they need, and she never sheds a tear because she's too busy making it happen. So there are many things in the world, and there are many Ellens in the world, but there's really only Ellen that's our true Ellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris Petrie is next. Now, Chris is not only a longtime member of the Chamber of Commerce, but he's a longtime member of the Board of Directors on the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, but you may know him best from Windsor Tire, where he worked for many years. Uh, Chris is considered to be the person singly most responsible for Windsor Tire becoming what it is today. Closed. Chris grew up in Norwood, graduated from Norwood High School. There he was heavily involved in sports, baseball, basketball, football, he bet on them all. <laughs> Chris has been described as a workaholic, which is somewhat true. Mention the word work, and he wants to drink. <laughs> now Chris and his wife Christine have been married for 18 years, and uh, when Chris first proposed to Christine, Christine was somewhat reluctant to accept very uh, hesitant, and uh, Chris asked her what the matter was, and she said, well, you know, it's just the sheer statistics of it all. I mean, 50% of marriages end in divorce. Chris says, I know. Christine said, well, what if this one doesn't? <laughs> Chris Petrie. Thanks, Arthur. Um, I have to do some chamber business. This is a chamber meeting. And I'm um, the vice chair, and uh, just some thank yous. It'll be real quick, so my time with people who are actually friends of mine, so they'll just they'll cut me some slack. Um, on behalf of the Stone Chamber of Commerce, the Stone Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, and the Executive Board, thank you all for coming out. Uh, Ellen is on the Executive Board. She is my co-vice chair, thankfully. Um, and I, I noticed tonight that, and I, I've known you for a long time, but I didn't know that you were like a control freak. We've asked Ellen to take over the chamber like probably 20 times 
and she just smiles and doesn't take over. So I don't know that that's a side of Ellen I, I didn't know. Um, we have these roasts every year. We, we pick someone. Um, well, we pick someone that will fill the room, basically, so uh, we can uh, make money for some great charities. And thank you again for coming. Um, Cindy Pizarro, who couldn't be here tonight, um, she uh, has an illness. She put this thing together. She chairs a lot of these things. She's very good at it. So uh, I hope she's doing okay. And um, so let's give it up for Cindy. And uh, Erica Remy and her husband, if they're out there, big help. Thank you very much, guys. Erica's done a lot of things with me, Farmer's Market and whatnot. She's a sweetheart. Um, and Terry Schneider and Joanne Schneider, who uh, always seem to pull these things off and, and make it look easy. I said it to Terry when he was saying, you know, this, this, and I said, Terry, we do these all the time. It's going to be fine. And then I got him some food. <laughs> so, uh, so thanks. And um, Arthur, you're doing a great job. Arthur's been a customer of mine forever. So has his wife. And uh, when you say opposites attract, that would have to be... <laughs> The, uh, I couldn't believe it. I just thought they had the same last name. And, um, and Arthur would come in and just sit in the waiting room and we'd tell him he was done and he'd say, thank you very much. And, you know, I mean, I didn't know what he did. I had, I mean, he just was quiet. He did his thing and he left and paid his bill. And Tina, um, <laughs> we're not here to roast you. Maybe we'll get you on the list. Join up the chamber, but uh, she's a trip. So, uh, you know, you guys, you guys are great together. So, um, when I was asked to be an official Ellen Roaster, um, the first thoughts that came to my head were how can someone roast literally, guys, literally the nicest and happiest person in Stoughton that I know? Possibly in Norfolk County. <laughs> maybe Massachusetts. Maybe the entire planet. She's always happy. She just is. So, so, I mean, how many people here know Ellen? Yeah, give it up. Is there anyone that doesn't know Ellen in here? Well, now you know her. She's been sitting up here on stage. We've never done this at a roast, so we might have to do it in the future. So now you see what a difficult job all these roasters and I had, because um, we're all here to make fun of, embarrass, jab, razz, and laugh at really the nicest person in the room. So how can a person do that and sleep at night? So I, I, uh, I did a lot of soul searching and I said, you know what, I really, I really can't do this. I just, I said I really can't. So, I cannot roast Ellen. So I decided to roast her husband Barry, which someone said earlier. So, so wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Barry and I have hung out a lot. He's, um, he's, a, he's a chamber wife, but he's a husband. <laughs> So we go to events together and, uh, yeah. So I started my work on Barry. And I don't know Barry that well. We, I mean, we get in conversations over a few drinks and a few more drinks and a few more. Um, but then I said, wait a minute. Barry's probably the second nicest person in this room. I said, how, so how can you roast Barry? So the only time, he likes his Jack and Ginger. I never heard of it before. We're at many events. He's... So the only time I saw Ellen a little bit was when I think Barry and I were going up for our fourth or fifth or maybe sixth, and then I snuck one back for him. But... And Ellie, Ellen very nicely said, Barry. And that was it. And, <laughs> and then I was drinking alone again. <laughs> so I cannot roast Barry or Ellen. I just can't do it. I gotta sleep at night, right? So what now? I'm racking my brain. I say, I, I, can I back out of this thing? No, I have the sound system. I'm gonna be here. And Cindy asked me, anybody that knows Cindy Pizarra, you can't say no and you don't back out. It's like Dory. You know, it's just, anybody knows Dory. Cindy would kill me. I, I, so I said, wait a minute, I got this. Franny Crimmins, everybody know Franny Crimmins? Maybe from Stoughton? For some reason, he's not roasting and not being roasted this year. So, I don't know how that happened. So if Franny isn't here, and he's the guy who always turns this into a bash Terry Schneider night, 
So I figured, let's maybe roast Terry Schneider. Mm. You know, they eat lots of food things. You know, I heard someone say something about food. Yeah, there was food. It's, it's sumptuous, very sumptuous. Um, but then, you know what? I said, this is Ellen's time. It really is Ellen's time. And Ellen, again, is definitely the happiest person that I know. <laughs> She's always smiling. She's always happy. And I didn't know I was going to have assistance up here. As you know, I, I tend to assist everybody, so I have help. So this is Alan's <laughs> happy flag. You're gonna hold that, okay? You can't hold it, all right? All right, I had instructions for this, too. Um, so, yeah. So, I have scenarios that might make Ellen unhappy at the YMCA, all right? Just a couple. And, um, you know, I don't know that a lot of you know some of the, the players. So, so, someone says, Ellen, Terry Schneider called again. He wants to do concerts in the auditorium. He wants to charge people and possibly profit from it at a non-profit location. Is that okay? So, yeah, um, <laughs> here's another one, it's real easy. Hey Ellen, Mark Snyder is on the phone again. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a real good one I think, but again, you people might not know these people. Um, and they're not here, which, well, there's probably a reason for it. Um, so Becky finds Ellen in her office, where she always is. Her old office, she told me she really liked it, um, because it had the windows and you could walk in and she could always see the people walking by, and as she would see the people walking by, what would she do? I don't know how she got anything done. Hey, it's Ellen, she's smiling. She's smiling. And you know why she's smiling? Sorry, there's no one to do my sound. Okay, so, tonight only, we have Ellen's Happy De-Stress Balls, everybody. Everybody, get an Ellen De-Stress Ball. You ever have stress? Squeeze the ball. That's what Ellen does. And we all want to be like Ellen, don't we? Take some stress balls. Wait in the back. Okay, I got one more, I got one more. Becky, Becky, who is, uh, I got plenty of stress balls on the floor in that chandelier, there's one. Um, so she finds Ellen in her office, and again, she's smiling. Uh, Becky informs Ellen, Mark Snyder and Jerry Savall are in the Speedos at the pool again. They're arguing about whose body oil is better for tanning. Children are getting scarred. I mean, scared. And P.S. that really happened. <laughs> so, and what was Ellen's response? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Oh yeah, that was, that was good. That was good stuff. Lots of fun. Just want to again thank some of our donors, the desserts, Tito's Cake, Stop and Shop, Orange Leaf, the Ahavatora Bingo Crew, and Dunkin' Donuts. Our next roaster, our next roaster is Leslie Bornstein. Now, it's, oh yeah, she and her husband Bob are longtime friends of the Greens, and they're also longtime congregants at her, at her synagogue and mine. Uh, you know, the membership committee at our synagogue 
has come up with a new way to attract new members. They tell any prospective new member that Leslie Bornstein is a congregant at some other synagogue. <laughs> Leslie's what I call a prolific conversationalist, or as her less diplomatic kids would say, a blabbermouth. Before the advent of the internet, there were basically three forms of communication on the South Shore. Telephone, telegraph, and tell Leslie Bornstein. <laughs> now, her husband Bob told me that uh, during their 31 years of marriage, there have been several stretches of like two or three days in a row where Bob has not spoken to Leslie. Didn't speak to her for two or three days in a row. Now, it's not that he was upset at Leslie, he just didn't want to interrupt her. <laughs> Leslie Bornstein. Call me the bag lady. Can you, oh. Can you hear me? Hi, Ellen. Congratulations. This is fun. Uh, Ellen and I are. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I didn't know how. I know you didn't feel comfortable in that hat in the book. Everyone loved it, right? Yeah. Oh, come on. Poor girl. She's sitting up here all night. Oh, no. Oh no. <laughs> so this is pretty close, don't you think? Oh, no, make, so you don't feel bad? What do you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah, I like it. You like it? You like it? Good. Okay, so Ellen and I are old friends from Stoughton, from the temple. Um, she's my good friend, and I'm old. <laughs> Older than you think. So, um, we know you work very hard, and some people have talked about this tonight. And uh, so, I wanted to ask some folks, some, how many people work hard? Could you raise your hand, please? This is going to be kind of interactive, and you better be interactive with me. <laughs> raise your hand. Who works hard? How many people kind of stay late at night? Um, you didn't raise your hand. Come on. So um, we know, um, yeah, you stay, what the hell do you do? <laughs> um, I tried to reach her yesterday, you know, she was out at Metro West. Um, I couldn't find you, couldn't talk to you. Then she was at a conference. She had another conference. Then she was down in um, Cape Cod. I mean, really, when do you work? <laughs> so you can see where the theme of this is going. Um, so, so, how you doing? Good. All right. So listen carefully. Um, when <laughs> Ellen, what the hell do you do? I said, Ellen, go home. You're all through. I said, Ellen, Barry's watching the clock. A time to stop all the talk. Ellen, gotta move those two feet. I said, Ellen, now your day is complete. I said, Ellen, you just sat in your chair. Ellen, did you really lose your chair? Everybody, it's fun to go to the YMCA. It's fun to go to the YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. Even sprain your ankle before you are through. YMCA, it's fun to go to the YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. I can't hear you. Ellen, all the work you get done, I said, Ellen. So the kids can have fun. I said, Ellen, what a difference you make if you could only stay awake. Ellen, your staff works so great. I said, Ellen, remember they stay so late. I said, Ellen, no one knows what you think because they all need a good stiff drink. 
It's fun to stay in the YMCA. It's fun to go to the YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. Even sprain your ankle when you are through. YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. Even sprain your ankle when you are through. El Ellen, let's work you get done. I said, Ellen, so the kids can have fun. I said, Ellen, what a difference you make if you could only stay awake. Ellen, your staff works so great. I said, Ellen, remember they stay so late. I said, Ellen, no one knows what you think because they all need a good stiff drink. YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. Even sprain your ankle for you are through. YMCA. It's fun to go to the YMCA. They have everything that you think you can do. Ellen, we love you. Thank you to Stoughton Fire and Stoughton for Police for helping us out tonight with the props. Thank you, Leslie. That was absolutely mediocre. Our last roaster is Jeff Russell. He is the Chief Operation Officer at the Old Colony Y. He is in charge of the whole place. He's Ellen's boss. Uh, Jeff once explained to me his work philosophy. I found it very interesting. He says, a little hard work never hurt anybody, but why take the chance? <laughs> Jeff's a man of few words, and by that I mean he has a very limited vocabulary. I, uh, I golfed once in a while with, with Jeff, and uh, I don't like golfing with Jeff. He, Jeff cheats. Jeff shaves his score on every single hole. In other words, if he shoots a five, writes down a four. Shoots a four, writes down a three. And I knew he was doing it, but he kept denying it, and I didn't have any proof. Until one day, one day I got my proof. One day, Jeff shot a hole in one and wrote down a zero from force of habit. <laughs> Remember that one? It's terrible. Now, I remember when I met Jeff for the very first time, and afterwards, Ellen asked me what I thought of him. I said, well, I think he's a, a real wit. Ellen said, well, you're half right. <laughs> Jeff Russell. You know, he thought it was funny. It was actually the best introduction I've ever got in all the talks <laughs> I've given, so, so thank you. Before um, Joyce and Dwyer and Ellen will tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that likes to get things squared away in this. Terry Schneider here? Terry, can you come up here? No, no, no it, it's very important. I, we passed out on your uh, table uh, the, the newsletter for Ellen's event. It was a couple of, but it came out last month, I think. And I don't know if it's on the table, if you could give, give it a look. But I was a little pissed off when I read this, I have to tell you. Oh, come on up here, Terry. Yeah, I want you to, I want you to explain to everybody here. <laughs> no, come right up, because you, you, you need to clarify things. So when you look at where it says some of the roses include, everybody see it? Yeah. And then he goes on to write about uh, Chris, Chamber of Commerce, and a nice guy. And I know Chris is. And then my good friend, Mark Leppo. Mark Leppo, previous Stoughton Chamber of Commerce, Old Colony Y board member. No nice guy. Not there. But the one that hurt me the most, really hurt me. Jeff Russell, Chief Operating Officer, Old Colony Y. Not a nice guy. <laughs> Just explain. I give, I'll give you 15 of my seconds. <laughs> I want to hear. For two years, I only had one eye. <laughs> All right. It's true. It's true. I'm kidding. We, uh, the, the Old Colony Y is in a tremendous place where we are in Stone today and has a lot to do with Terry Schneider and the support he gave us eight years ago. I'm grateful for that. 
I, uh, unlike the other uh, roasters, um, I have a, uh, a very difficult, um, different job to do tonight, because uh, she's an employee of the Old Colony Y, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the Department of Labor laws and grievance <laughs> procedures and all that go with that. And I'm just thrilled to death that um, what wasn't mentioned in Ed Shatkansky's introduction, and this is a serious and a very proud statement, is that he was appointed a judge just a couple weeks ago, and he deserves a round of applause for <laughs> Which is remarkable, and Ed has a, just a rich history with us, and it's more important for me tonight that he's actually here in the capacity of a judge, because I, I have in front of me, uh, all the staff will tell you I'm, I'm anal when it comes to hold harmless agreements. <laughs> so we have here an official uh, and we have a lot of witnesses here to see it, but this is a hold harmless agreement between Ellen Green and Jeff Russell in the old colony Y, and I'm going to ask her to sign it. <laughs> and I'm going to ask this table here to witness the signature. But it says, I, Ellen Green, being a productive and hardworking employee of the old colony Y, with sound mind and good physical health, do hereby acknowledge things may be said about me at this roast tonight by Jeff Russell, a colleague of mine at the old colony Y. And therefore, agree with all present here to witness to hold Jeff Russell harmless for words spoken and actions taken and will not file any grievance to the Human Resource Department of the Old Colony Y tonight, tomorrow, Monday morning, or any time thereafter. <laughs> sign this night, October 22nd, 2016. Well, if you could just sign that on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying another word till that's signed and signed by the witnesses. <laughs> you guys witness it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so on a, on a more serious note, um, those of you that, in fact, people from the YMCA, any YMCA, could you just stand up? Members too. Yeah. I'm incredibly proud of this group and I also want to apologize to them right now. For, for, for what's about to take place. I said to, I was talking to my wife, I said, I'm, I'm going to a roast uh, next week and I, I really, I don't even know how to cook. <laughs> and she said, well, you, you'll figure it out. You're the chief operating officer of the old county. Why? You, you must be able to figure it out. And I said, I really don't know how to roast anything. And then she said, well, again, you've got to be creative. You, you know, talk to your teammates who you have such great respect for, and, and they're innovative, and they find solutions all the time. Still didn't get it. So, um, but I'm driving over here tonight, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, how, can I, how can I pull off the appropriate roast for Ellen Green? So I stopped in Market Basket on the way here. <laughs> Barry, could you come up, too? <laughs> and I'd like to present... A chicken to Ellen from the market basket. And one for Barry, too. I'm told this is the best roast in this area. It smells good. Huh? It smells good. Yeah. So I, I want you to know when I was in Market Basket, and I know, St I know Stop and Shop sponsored some of the treats tonight, and I'm sorry, I would have picked up the chicken there, but... Um, Arthur DeMoulos was actually in line, and I said, uh, geez, he said, what, what are you getting the chicken for? I said, I'm actually bringing it uh, to a friend. She, she's having a roast tonight. He said, oh, that's great. And um, <laughs> then I went on to, uh, I said, geez, would you ever consider being a, ch you know, a chamber member of the Stoughton Chamber of Commerce as Market Basket? You know, you people are tied into the community. You're wonderful. And he says, well, tell me a little bit about it. So I, the first thing I said, well, well Terry Schneider in the, in the news release didn't even say I was a nice guy. <laughs> and he said, Jeff, I've known you my whole life, and I would never join anything that people would disrespect you like that. So, Terry, I almost had a member for you, but actually you're the one that blew it. <laughs> so anyway. Jeff, the food comes from Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll buy my chicken there the next time you ask me to roast, so. I, um, and that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. I cannot, other than what we just did, roast Ellen Green. And it has everything to do with my incredible respect for her and her family. Uh, we came, I don't know if, if you're all aware, but I grew up in this town uh, many years ago. 
and have such love for uh, the, the community of Stoughton, Massachusetts. And um, eight years ago when the old Colony Y came back in, we came back in with great dignity and we came back in with uh, a vision. And the vision that was the clearest for us were to retain as many of the employees of the JCC that we could. And a lot of them are here tonight. Joyce Dwyer, absolutely one of my favorites. And Ellen Green, um, when, we, well, when we went through, and this, that's, the humor is done, by the way. When we went through, because <laughs> I, I can't roast her, she's awesome. But what we did when the Y came in eight years ago, I physically sat um, in the lobby of the Y and met all my high school friends and community members that I had been associated with 35, 40 years ago. And prior to that, we interviewed every employee that we wanted to retain. And it was a, it, the interview process was quite difficult in that they were nervous they may not have a job. I was nervous they may not stay with us. And I think um, when we completed that process, what we learned was the best part of that acquisition was the employees of the Stoughton YMCA, at now the Stoughton YMCA, but the, at the time the JCC that we were able to retain. And I can remember interviewing with Ellen, and, and it was really, and I, we interviewed a lot of people, but Ellen was just had a, you could just sense her passion and her love for everything, and she was not at all nervous about um, um, being retained. I think she was very confident, but, um, but she portrayed such a level of professionalism and passion for the workers that were there. In fact, I took it a step further and went out into the community and networked with and talked to a number, a good number of the stakeholders and there were several names mentioned and Ellen was one of them and they said, if, if you do not hire this person, we, we're gonna revoke our membership. We're not gonna join the YMCA. So, so it was a good business decision, but, <laughs> <clears throat> but unlike Terry, um, Ellen, after the interview, looked at me right in my eyes and she said, you know, you're really a nice guy. <laughs> and on that statement, I, as she left, I said, oh, she has lousy judgment, but I still want to hire her anyway. <laughs> but I just want to, you know, I put down a few notes for Ellen because she, she, she doesn't know it, but she's very near and dear to me. She's just an incredible, powerful woman that I could not be more proud of. And I, and I say that publicly, and um, we, um, we've built a team in Stoughton that has taken that talent into all of our branch operations now, and, and we, we owe so much to the, the people that we stayed with us, and now we're celebrating just incredible success. But I wanted to just, I have a few notes, um, because I really wanted to capture the words and not kind of trip over them, but Ellen is a wonderful woman with wonderful class, grace, passion, compassion, work ethic, Dignity. Ellen is honest, strong-willed, and it's been laughed at tonight a little bit, but her strong will is in a very powerful way, very purposeful way. She's focused, she's ethical, she's respectful, she's family-oriented, and people have picked on Barry tonight, and we've had, Barry's been at every event, I mean, with the last couple of years we've had such phenomenal growth that the team that we have in Stoughton is in front of us lifting heavy equipment and getting things ready for a lot of the people in the room right now. And Barry is there always with an enormous smile, uh, supporting his wife and equally supporting the mission of our great organization. So we're, we, get a, we get a tufa when we hired Ellen because uh, Barry is just, a, you know, just an inspiration. She's dedicated, she's very direct, um, and I love that. I mean, sometimes when you have a big title, which I hate titles, but um, there's a level of intimidation and people don't always bring forward the issues that need to be resolved and um, I'm blessed with some humbleness that I know every single person that works for me is smarter than me and I, I allow that to, um, to kind of strengthen itself within it and they're just a cre incredible people. She, we have, you know, eight years ago we, we, we took it over and I hate that term, take it over, JCC and this uh, combined Jewish philanthropies were just remarkably supportive of us and we didn't miss a beat. But it had a lot to do with, with really a lot of people, but Joyce Dwyer and Ellen Green just provided such great stability for us. And, and really they brought to Old Colony Y a, 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 a validation of our decision to come into Stoughton and we, we just, we just, we just, 
it has exceeded every expectation. And we're, um, you know, we're, we're on good, I mean, we bought it eight years ago. We just added on a $6 million expansion so you can see the confidence the board of directors even had. The only thing I was nervous about a minute ago with that, <clears throat> the, 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 um, the song, there were a bunch of things being passed out. And I didn't see what they were, but I, I hope to heck it wasn't free guest passes. Cause we, <laughs> we're not doing anything free unless, unless you need it. So. <laughs> So I think um, I just want to write and read what I wrote. You know, thank you for your awesomeness, Ellen, for being the person you are, for sharing yourself and your talents with this remarkable community and with all of us at the Old Colony Y. And may God continue to bless you abundantly as he clearly has thus far. Thank you. This is from the staff at the Y, and it will go with their chicken dinner when they get home tonight. <laughs> we love you. Well, this has been a great night. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. No, I'm just kidding. It's time for Ellen. Time for Ellen to have her rebuttal. Ellen's been a good sport. She sat there taking a lot of guff. Uh, it's been a difficult couple of weeks for her. I know she's been very nervous and on edge. Uh, it's got nothing to do with this roast. She, not, she heard that the makers of Grecian formula for women might be going out of business. <laughs> Ellen Green. is I was going to get up here and I have some jokes and I'm probably going to still try to do them but I'm not sure I'm the best deliverer um, so we're going to give it a shot so hopefully it goes if it doesn't go don't boo me just tell me okay let's go to the next but I will tell you that no matter what this this was really funny I actually wrote a joke that said or not joke but because I probably didn't write anything between David and Barry and Ben and Erica and whatever everybody else helped me but I would have said this would be really funny if it wasn't happening to me. <laughs> but in reality, there was really nothing here tonight that was uncomfortable. Um, I think people were really kind and fun and um, clever and pretty amazing. So anyway, so I am going to start with Ed. I just want to say something about everybody. So I, this is, these, these are my jokes, so good luck to us. <laughs> Ed, I understand that you are about to become a judge. After hearing how you roasted me, I just want to say, I object. <laughs> yes, I got a laugh! <laughs> so, since you are becoming a judge, does that mean you get benched? Oh, that was a, that was, okay. Okay, Mark. It's on to you. So um, you are proof that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> At least you are not obnoxious like so many other people. You are obnoxious in a different way. Uh, and Mark, I'm not in insulting you. I'm actually describing you. But the biggest thing for Mark is in terms of my love for Mark is, you know, I wrote, no, but really, Mark is such a badass, he beat cancer. <laughs> Sam, where am I, oh, there's Sam. <laughs> she was really good tonight. Sam, you were phenomenal. <laughs> Sam is really funny, but looks aren't everything. You have to say one of those, right? We consider Sam our sheltered, this is Barry, Barry's joke, Barry and Erica. I know, well, we consider Sam our sheltered daughter. Thankfully, she was housebroken when we took her in. I don't wanna say that Sam is young, but I will say she's the only roaster that hasn't hit her sell-by date. That was a so-so. Yeah. No, that was, I think David, I think David helped me with that one. Oh, maybe that was something I came up with. No wonder it was an uh. All right, Stan, Stan. 
I think I did these, so I don't know. Or with help. No, okay. Just do them. He's telling me just do them. Stan carries around a business card with important telephone numbers like the president, the pope, and himself. <laughs> Obviously, he thinks very highly of himself. As a matter of fact, when he walks into the Y, he expects a standing ovation. He has even requested a treadmill with a red tread or a red carpet. He will be waiting a very long time. <laughs> with most people, the left side of your brain does some things and the right side does others. In his case, however, neither side seemed to do a whole lot. <laughs> Johanna. Johanna. Um, I don't know how I could roast you when you were just great with me, but um, being the oldest sister, the best thing about her is that whatever I say, she'll forget before she gets the car. <laughs> when I was little, Johanna used to tell me I was adopted. She actually did, by the way. She finally stopped when I told her at least our parents wanted me. <laughs> All my life I have tried to convince her she is older than she is. That is true too. The problem is that it makes me older too. <laughs> Doesn't really work. Cecile, okay, Cecile. Cecile has changed her body shape a lot over the years. It's tremendously. So she's lost a lot of weight, but David, Thank you for being a good husband, because you found it. <laughs> and I've always thought of Cecile as We know that. She's, we probably even, whatever. And I know I don't speak like that normally. Now I call her a skinny <laughs> David, I was going to give you a nasty look when I heard your jokes, but I see you already have one. I don't want to say you are Mutt and Jeff, but you do give dancing cheek to cheek a, a new meaning. <laughs> Susan, hi. I don't, I'm not crying now. No. Susan, why does the spinathon need a chair when every bike has its own seat? <laughs> she is my chair, and she is amazing. Susan, Susan is strong, and I found, what I found is that strong people don't put others down. What they do is pick them up and slam them down for maximum effect. <laughs> Don't think about doing the next time we're working out together. Chris, where's Chris? I'm at the <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you're so, you're so vain. You, had ne you never met a mirror you didn't like, and not only that, married a woman with the same name. Chris and Chris, how do you, how, whatever. There are jokes that go with that that are X-rated and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. No, we all have the same birthday too. We do. Yeah, me, you, and my wife. Right, and um, Michelle, and and we have somebody else who works at the Y now too. So, um, Chris, <laughs> you told me the last time I was at the shop, which isn't the shop you work at now, right? Because you work at Huggard and Ewing, whatever. Now you didn't work there then. Is that where anyway. you had a bright yellow car? Yeah. <laughs> Chris told me the last time I was at the shop, he couldn't repair my brakes, so he made my horn louder. <laughs> okay, Bornsteins. Yep, you're it. Bob and Leslie were happy for 20 years, and then they met. Of course, it was more like 25 years. I don't know how many years they, they took them to meet, but Bob is really great at multitasking. He can waste time, be unproductive, and procrastinate all at once. Where's Bob? Oh, right there. Oh, right under my radar. It's a family trait. Um, Bob has never really grown up. So Leslie, being a teacher, she uses her skills to teach him how to act in public. Right? We are beginning to finally see some results. Jeff. I'm Jeff. With uh, Attorney Sharkansky here, I just want to remind you that uh, I have not signed a whole homicide. Uh, <laughs> I'll draft one for you if you want me to. <laughs> if you looked up nice guy in the dictionary, there would be a picture of Jeff, truly. But who, who, who still, I can't see, I knew I screwed up, one of them. Who in this room actually still uses the dictionary? But a bum! Did you get that? Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Wait, Erica, you want to do it? <laughs>
when you look up nice guy in the dictionary, you can see a Victor and Jen. But who in this room still uses a dictionary? So Jeff, you have been described to me as a peach, which I consider to be a compliment. So I was thinking what other, that there are others we work with that we might, might be described as bananas, which we can kind of consider an insult. What I don't understand is why we are allowing fruit discrimination at the Y. <laughs> All right. Now, if I could see you in my office Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my joke for Arthur, I think, is going to lie flat, so I'm going to not going to do it. And you guys have heard enough jokes, but I did want to get a little bit serious. I know everybody probably wants to go home, but I did want to get a little serious. Arthur, you did an amazing job. I so picked the right person. <laughs> I want to thank my family because they did not like this idea. Um, they supported me all the way through it. And um, I really do appreciate that. And, I'm, and they helped me through, which is really good. I feel much better now than I did two hours ago. Thank you. No! No! Not done! I wanted to thank the committee, Cindy, Terry, Leslie, Bornstein, and Erica Remy. Thank you very much for taking this on. I know this was a little bit extra work on top of your already busy schedules. Um, truly appreciated. Um, I did. I did just want to say again for Arthur, he was very clever. I, I, I think, you know, clearly he's smart, which is amazing. But, but really, to be this clever to be able to do jokes on all these people he doesn't know is pretty amazing. And I, I just want to say that again. Um, all of the roasters for stepping up out of their comfort zone and supporting community charities. I know Sam was like not so happy about doing it as an example, but. You all did it. I mean, Susan didn't think she was going to do it. You all did it, and I really appreciate that. Um, the people who put in the ads, really, you know, we raised more money. Thank you. That's all I can say. Anybody who put an ad in, really appreciated. And lastly, all of you who came out tonight to have fun, I really appreciate it. But before we go, I do have a couple other things. Mark, next to you is a bag, and there are some... Terrible thing to say about Sam. <laughs> item for everybody who was part of the Rose Panel and Arthur, and it says, these are nuts, so it's, it's roasted, nuts. roasted nuts, yep. Thank you for roasting, thank you for roasting me. We must all be nuts, and I do believe we really are all nuts to be able to do this. And then my name and the date, today's date. Please everybody take one home. They are good now, so I don't know how long they'll last, but. Let's choose, can I have the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> so I have one for everybody. Please don't leave without your nuts. <laughs> okay. Lastly, I'm really ready. I know you're ready to go, but I really, lastly, I really wanted to make this about what we are doing here tonight. So. Um, I want to share with you that your support for the two charities I chose tonight, Havat Torah Congregation and the Old Colony YNCA, will advance all the good work we do in Stoughton and the surrounding communities. I can share so many stories about how these two organizations enrich our lives, but today I want to share with you how these two organizations came together last year, along with others, others to provide a Christmas Eve experience for families in need. I think it was important for you to, to hear what, what, what happens to all this? And clearly, those people who work with me at the Y really understand it. But I don't know if the people who are here from the Y know about the ATC and what Havat Torah does and vice versa. So here's a great example where we work together and we used, we used the funding that we, we develop here. Um, think about this. Close your eyes or just think about what it is. So it's, it's how welcome and blessed people feel. So this is a Christmas Eve experience. It's how welcome and blessed they feel when they get a complete home cooked meal with all the fixings they can think of. Or it's the smiles that they see when the children get presents, an enormous sense of great gratefulness that parents feel because their children are happy. Or it could be the warmth that comes over them when they pick out their coats and gloves and hats that are given to them freely, and they get to choose which, what color and what size they are. You are the ones 
that make a difference by supporting these charities. You fill bellies, keep folks warm, bring smiles and laughter to so many. Thank you everyone for all that you do and have a good night.